Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Well, I'm going to talk about Tesla, and I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel too, because uh, so if I sound like a little bit different, it's because of that. But we, we got to talk about Tesla. Now, this is something that I brought up with people before. It, Joe Kennedy, the famous investor, right before the stock market crash, before the Great Depression, <clears throat> he received a stock tip from a shoe shine boy. And when that happened, he turned around and he sold off all his stock. The reason being, when lay people who aren't into this kind of stuff start telling you uh, what stocks to buy, it's pretty much akin to, you know, uh, me as a person who doesn't watch golf <clears throat> talking to a guy who watches golf all the time and talking about particular aspects of golf. Because when I was in the break room, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to rehash it. I was, in my, it was in the break room and I was talking to this woman. She, she knows I know about the thrift savings program. We started talking. And I, 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 she asked me, she goes, what stocks should I be buying? And I looked at her and I go, none. And she looked at me with this confused look. And then she says, well, everybody around the office here is talking about buying Tesla stock. That's the stock to buy right now, right? And this was when it was around $2,500 a share right before the split. I told her no. And then I went on to explain to her all the reasons why, which I'm going to go into today. So the reason I bring this up is... Tesla shares fall 10% a day after investors slashed $50 billion from its market value as Elon Musk revealed cheaper battery cars are three years away. Okay, now, this particular aspect, we're going to go through this step by step on why Tesla fanboys don't actually know what they're talking about. And I get it. You can come back at me with the, what is Catherine Woods? Of, uh, of of ARK Invest, she's buying Tesla because she knows its value $7,000 a share. And you don't know what you're talking about. She's a better investor than you. She certainly is a better investor than me. Far superior. She's way smarter than I am. She knows way more about investing than I do. What she doesn't know about is my other fun hobbies that I'd like to do. Besides invest, inve investing, reading about that, sharing my crappy brand of stand-up comedy. There's also something else I've been fascinated by for years. And that's the rate of technological innovation. Okay. Ray Kurzweil's work has influenced me greatly in my thinking. He pretty much nailed autonomous cars and where they would be, but even he said, you know, it's not going to be mass adoption until the 2030s. You're going to see it becoming more, self-driving cars are going to become more common in the 2020s, but you're not really going to see the mass adoption until the 2030s. So, this is what I brought up with people. They were, all the headlines I'd been reading from fanboys is Elon Musk is going to offer a million mile battery at the at the battery day. And I said, I don't think he is. And people said, what are you basing that on? Well, it's just my cursory knowledge of battery storage at this point and articles that I've read that we're nearing our limitations for the time being. And that we're gonna have to probably have some sort of technological breakthrough to get the million dollar battery. It's not here yet. It may be here in the next five years. Maybe definitely probably in the next 10. But so what they announced today, everybody thought it was going to be the million mile battery. And Elon Musk revealed um, that it's going to be three years before the cheaper batteries get here. I don't even think that it's going to be three years. 
I think it's going to be five years. Um, this is what I've been warning about people about with Tesla. And my thesis on, well, yeah, I, all these bro vesters on, I call them bro vesters on YouTube. And look, I'm a bro vester myself. I'm just smart enough to realize the limitations in my knowledge and not think that I'm the next Warren Buffett, which is why most of my money is in mutual funds. Because I recognize I'm probably not the greatest stock picker. I'm bullish on Alibaba, just for the simple reason, if you look at how much money it's bringing in versus Shopify and where it is in the technological space, it's just so far ahead of it. And Shopify's valued at $1,000 a share. $900 a share, something like that. I didn't look that up. But so they wiped $50 billion from its market value on the news that cheaper batteries are three years away. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and knock off some market value further. See, I think Tesla shares are going to wind up being down somewhere in the hundreds, if not less. Here's why. When you add that all back together, Tesla in March, Tesla stock, at, let's just go with Tesla stock, December 2019 price. Okay. In December, in December of 2019, Tesla reached $420 a share. So if you look at it, if it goes down to about 80 bucks, that's right in the vicinity of where it was in December of 2019. And even that, after the split, I think is overvalued. If you put a fair price on what I would uh, pay for Tesla stock to speculate that maybe Tesla reaches it one day rules the world or is even like a solid revenue generator. I don't even know if I'd pay 200 bucks a share for that stock, to be honest with you. Okay, so let's knock some further valuation off Tesla stock. Drop 5.4%, closing down 10%. Okay, so one of the biggest selling points, if you go to this guy, I really despise this dude. But uh, financial education's main guy, Jeremy, I despise him for a couple of reasons, one of which is that he blatantly steals from his fans. So he was droning on and on about Tesla's autonomous taxi and how much money that it's going to add to Tesla's market cap. Okay, again, this is a, this dolt, what he doesn't he doesn't understand the underlying technology. This is the entire problem with Tesla's valuation in what people don't understand. Full autonomy. Let's say that I give you, I grant you the benefit of the doubt. That Elon Musk has reached full autonomy in Tesla by 2025. So you're saying the robo taxis will be up and going. Do you honestly think that the government is going to allow cars without pilots driving down the street in 2025? I mean, if you're listening to this, which nobody listens to my podcast anyways, but or really watches my channel, but ask yourself an on this this question. Sit back and think about this stuff. Of everything that you know about our government and having to regulate everything from the amount of poppable bubbles on bubble wrap, the, the government sanding off all the corners so that nobody falls and gets a boo-boo and otherwise handicapping capitalism. Do you really think in five years a pilotless car fully autonomous is going to pass all the regulatory hurdles. If you do, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn, my friend. That ain't going to happen. 
okay? Plus, I'm not sold. I've talked about this. I talked about this in another episode of the podcast. I'm not sold that full autonomy would be here in 2025 that would be good enough to traverse certain environments, such as snowy, inclement weather, um, making it difficult for the car's radar. I don't know how the car's radar operates, so I could be completely off on this, how the car sees. But, you know, snowy conditions, dark, wet, rainy conditions. Maybe it <clears throat> can see better than I can. I don't know. <clears throat> Traversing difficult terrain like mountainous regions. Sure, in cities where the grid pattern is pretty well laid out, I could see some level of autonomy being able to navigate those cities in 2025. But I don't see it. Being, I don't see it. <clears throat> You're sitting at your apartment and you call a robotic taxi. All these people are talking about, then your car becomes a wealth generator because it's out working for you. Well, you know, at a certain point, when you get to full autonomy like that, what's the point of me even have a car, having a car? You know, that that's where I think it's eventually going, anyways. But that is not going to happen by 2025, which is the number that all these YouTubers don't understand. Some of them are, some of these YouTubers out there that I'm watching, they're not bad stock pickers. Some of them have good fundamentals. It's the fact that they talk out of their ass about other stuff that they don't understand. Like this guy, George Perez and Jeremy from Financial Education. You don't understand battery technology. Not that I do to a great extent. I just have enough cursory knowledge that I can actually go in and when you say, yeah, there's going to be a million mile battery uh, on battery day. Eh, I didn't believe that for a second. I was like, I don't know where you're getting that number from. You're barely squeezing 250,000 out of them now. I don't, I don't see how you, you know, quadrupled that in a year. I don't know what technological breakthrough you were talking about that would enable that. So... We knocked off the autonomous taxi version of it, okay? That's not there. It's not going to be there in 2025. And basically, the stock is currently priced, even at the levels that it's dropped to now, about $360 or $380. It's still pricing in that Tesla is going to have its robotic taxi service up. It's not going to happen. I don't, like I said, I, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I'll, I'll state it again. I don't know if the, te I think the technology would be there, that it would be feasible in cities, but I just don't see bureaucrats allowing it to go like that. Like, oh, Elon, okay, yeah, you could just send your cars wherever. Nobody behind the wheel. It's just too new of an experience for people. Okay. So we've knocked down that. Let's talk about the other huge problem with Tesla. The entire EV market is overheated like it was at the height of the tech boom. See, it's there's with technology, there's always the promise of technology. So people rush in not really understanding even the basics of the technology that they're invent investing in, okay? The EV market is that way because people are making broad assumptions that they actually understand the nuances of this industry when they don't. GM is a much larger company. And it generates much more income than Tesla. Ford, they've all, uh, Volkswagen just announced its electric vehicle. Okay. All of these companies are diving in this market 
because they see the potential value. They see what happened to Tesla's stock. And they see that in the future, although you're going to find out electric vehicles aren't as good for the environment as you seem to think that they are. Because they require a lot of rare earth metals that are going to require us to mine. So there's going to be an increase in strip mining. Strip mining in undisturbed areas of forests and natural preserves. So you're still damaging the environment. Okay? That's another thing these people don't understand. Um, the electrical infrastructure isn't ready yet. Look around. You're just now seeing Wawa has charging stations. Okay? These will gradually get in, installed. But so we've got that Tesla now doesn't enjoy a wide moat at all. Yeah, sure, they got first mover advantage, but first mover advantage doesn't always last as long as you think. Okay? Especially in the technology game. There's a lot of money to there's a lot of money to be made. And a lot of players in the market now. We've got the competition from Chinese electric vehicles. That's another knock against Tesla. Well, Tesla's going to be in China. Talked about this before. China is not going to allow an American company to dominate that market. They are pouring it money into NIO. NIO, however you say it. All these other electric car companies. So, we arrive at the electric vehicle market that people don't understand. So what's going to happen, this is my prediction, and uh, you can come talk to me within a year, because I think it's going to be about a year. I think people are just now starting to wake up to this fact. It's going to run up. If you had bought uh, all these tech companies that stayed afloat during uh, the tech bubble of the late 90s, and they dropped... It took you 10 to 15 years to get your money back. In fact, I don't think Oracle has even risen back to the level that it was in 1999, which means 20 years later, you still haven't got all your money out of it or back from it, even if it, or if you bought it at the top. Okay. This is the problem. People don't understand this. The EV market's going to tank. People are going to bail out of these stocks and they're going to stay flat for the next 10 to 15 years. That's if they survive. I, you know, I, I'm not 100% sold that Tesla's going to be here in 15 years. Well, you know, the thing you're not factoring in is that Tesla also has Solar City. Okay, great. A lot of money to be made in solar. There are actually massive amounts of limitations, again, with energy storage. It's a battery problem. Okay? You can throw whatever you want to throw at me, but ultimately there is a storage problem. And you thus, again, you get into the fact that Tesla does not enjoy a wide moat in that. SpaceX. Okay, maybe, but you have competition from Amazon and they are actually have much more revenue and a more varied portfolio. I think Amazon is overvalued right now, but I still wouldn't deter you if you're like, I don't care. I'm looking at Amazon 10 years down the road. I would look at you and say, you know, I can't really hate on that. It's just I'm not trying to buy too many things outright that I already own in mutual funds. So, I mean, I don't, I don't get, I did an entire video on it, but I just wanted to rehash it. If you're a person watching my channel or you're listening to my podcast and you bought Tesla back in March when it dropped or two years ago, might as well leave your money in. But if it was me, I would have taken my profits a long time ago. Because the more I read up on Tesla, the more I just don't think 
<clears throat> I think the only thing keeping this thing a lot, keeping this thing where it is now, is just overzealous fanboys who want to blow Elon Musk behind a dumpster. Yeah, you know, that's that's my warning to people. So I'm going to call that a podcast. If you liked it, give it a like. If not, if you like my channel, give it a like and subscribe. If not, you can leave me a hateful comment. So thanks for listening.